So today we continue our series on the soul and its evolutionary journey. This is part one of a three-part series um, preparing for the soul's entry. And Vladimir's topic today is embryo life and terrestrial evolution of species. What do we know about our life before birth and after death? According to Sri Aurobindo and the mother, it neither starts with birth nor ends with death. Birth and death are the entry and exit points for our embodied state of being. The embryo life during the nine month period covers the process of evolution of species starting from plants and ending with the human body. Vladimir shall explore these stages with respect to the evolution of consciousness and share many other findings of his research in this area. Again, please put any questions uh, that you have and, and comments in the Q&A box because there will be time at the end to, uh, to address them. And so with that, Vladimir, I'd like to go ahead and hand it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Radha. And um, so we will start with um, the uh, overview. I will project, I prepared the PowerPoint. Mm, overview of Sri Aurobindo's explanation of what is our embodiment here. Sri Aurobindo's explanation of evolution of consciousness. The terrestrial evolutionary working, says Sri Aurobindo, has a double process. There is an outward visible process of physical evolution with birth as its machinery for each evolved form of body housing its own evolved power of consciousness is maintained and kept in continuity by heredity. This is uh, an important part. It's how we understand the evolution of species nowadays. It's a Darwinian uh, view on evolution that the species evolve from body to body through genome. And it's uh, important to keep it uninterrupted. Mm, has to be kept in continuity by heredity. So uh, in the mother, the new baby, the new body is uh, formed and um, released into life. And then in the other, in this mother, the new body is born and released. So from body to body, uh, uninterrupted thread of evolution is to be kept and could not be interrupted because then evolution will stop. So we need the body to carry on the uh, evolution forward. There is at the same time an invisible process of soul evolution with rebirth into ascending grades of form and consciousness as its machinery. At the same time, the soul which embodies into the body is also evolving, evolving and growing and learning how to be here. And it is continuing this growth through rebirth or reincarnation. So we have two simultaneous kind of tracks, yes? Um, one is that uh, uh, the body is maintaining the continuous changes. And the other is that uh, the, uh, the soul is coming and visiting and revisiting over time, plunging into the body and developing it and leaving it and comes again in the future. So, so to say, uh, my son and his grand, grand, grandson may be uh, the place for me to come in again. So this development, de developmental model is taking place through time. So I can imagine myself as the body extended in time over many, many embodiments. So my body has many bodies and it grows over time, 
where it is more suitable for me to come in and develop even further and push the whole evolution of instruments further. So Shirobindo speaks on the psychic being in this way. The psychic being is a flame born out of the divine and luminous inhabitant of the ignorance grows in it till it is able to turn it towards the knowledge. It is a deputy of the unborn self or Atman in the forms of nature the individual soul supporting mind, life and body, standing behind them, watching and profiting by their development and experience. This is what I meant, that, uh, that they are, uh, that the soul is growing with the help of the development of the instruments of knowledge of the body, learning from the mind, life and body, and learning how to be here and how to evolve, how to even develop better these instruments. If it can come forward into the front and govern overtly and entirely this outer nature of mind, life and body, then these can be cast into soul images of what is true, right and beautiful. And in the end, the whole nature can be turned towards the real aim of life the supreme victory, the ascent into spiritual existence. So we can see that the body itself turns and transforms with the help of the soul growing in it over time and changing it and making it more and more suitable for the ascent into spiritual existence. This is the vision of Sri Aurobindo and the mother and integral yoga. The mother speaks on the soul choosing its body in this way. When a soul is conscious, fully formed, and wants to incarnate, usually from its psychic plane where it rests, it looks for a corresponding psychic light at a certain place upon earth. So there will be some light telling the psychic being where to go. Besides, you, during its previous incarnation, before going away, before leaving the earth atmosphere, usually as a result of the experience it had in the life that is coming to an end, the soul chooses more or less, not in all details, but broadly, the conditions of its future life. So when we leave the body, in that moment we have this experience, special experience, where we, by observing what happened to us in some kind of like a film, everything, all the elements will be visible to us, we decide what we want to achieve in the next reincarnation. So these are the conditions chosen by our soul before leaving. Thinking of a soul which would say, no, I refuse this body, I'm going to look for another, mother answers, I don't say it is impossible, everything is possible. It does not happen in fact that children, it does happen in fact that children are still born, which means that there was no soul to incarnate in them. It has also happened that souls have incarnated and then left. There are many reasons why they go away. Children who die very young, after a few days or a few weeks, this may be for a similar reason. Mm, there is an interesting uh, example of this that happened, uh, which happened in Auroville, um, when the first um, Auro son was born from uh, Frederick and Shyama, that was the first son, the first baby born in Auroville. After some time, when he was young, few years old, he fell into the, uh, into the pond, into the water and drowned. 
And they came to the mother and said, what, what shall we do? The first son has died. And uh, she said, don't worry, his soul is with me. He didn't like the body. And this is exactly this kind of case. Uh, and she said, don't worry, you produce another child and I will send this soul into this child. <laughs> so into this body. And then later, new our son was born and he was younger than the other children who were born in the meanwhile, uh, many of them. And still we consider our son to be the first son of our will. Though he was born much later, some kind of uh, Auroville mythology. <laughs> so it is about the soul choosing the body. The inherited conditions and the place of birth. Even when, says the mother, it has consciously participated in the formation of physical body, still so long as the body is formed in the usual animal way, it will have to struggle and correct all those things which come from this human animality. Inevitably, parents have a particular formation. They are particularly healthy or unhealthy. Even taking things at their best, they have a heap of atavisms, habits, formations in the subconscious and even in the in unconscious, which come from their own birth, because they also inherited bodies. The environment they have lived in, their own life, and even if they are remarkable people, they have a large number of things which are quite opposed to the true psychic life, even the best of them, even the most conscious. So we take on ourselves, onto ourselves, uh, all that uh, mm, evolutionary past, because we have to deal with it and transform it into a higher being, or higher means of living. If a psychic being sees from its psychic world a light on earth, on the earth, it may rush down there without knowing exactly where it is. This is usually the case. Everything is possible. But if the psychic being is very conscious, sufficiently conscious, it will seek the light of aspiration in the precise place because of the culture, the education it will find there. This happens much more frequently than one believes, especially in somewhat educated circles. This is quite interesting and that could actually explain why the cults were and rituals were so important. Um, because the cults were composing a particular culture of Varnas. For example, Brahmins were living in their own domain, reciting the Vedas, constantly thinking about the divine, having a specific type of life. And then when they were producing children, they were actually showing the Brahmin souls where to go. And so in the Brahmin family, only Brahmins could be born because they could recognize from the subtle world the place where to go. The cult was helping, helping them to choose the right place. And when in the Gita, uh, Sri Krishna announces that he is mixing jatis from now on, and so nobody would know where to go, uh, Arjuna uh, objects to this and he says when you mix the jatis, the varnas, basically the place where to go, we would not know in which family who is born. In the Brahmin's family, the Shudra can be born. When we say Brahmin, Shudra, Vaishya, Kshatriya, we mean the developmental stage of the psychic being. 
So different stages of psychic being can be born in different families mixed up. Then uh, the answer was very interesting. He says now everyone in his soul by his individual merit should find me the Supreme. And not only Brahmins and Kshatriyas, but also the Shudras and women, he says. Because that time women were considered to be uh, kind of not free to choose. It's a cultural thing. So a few words about the time of reincarnation. For the destiny, says the mother, which follows after death, the last state of consciousness is usually the important, the most important. That is, if at the moment of death one has to, one has the intense aspiration to return to continue his work, then the conditions are arranged for it to be done. The more evolved the psychic is, the nearer it is to its complete maturity, the greater the time between the births. There are beings who reincarnate only after a thousand years, two thousand years. The closer one is to the beginning of the formation, the closer are the reincarnations. And sometimes even altogether at the lower level, when man is quite near the animal, it goes like this gesture. That is, it is not unusual for people to reincarnate in the children of their children. Like that. Something like that. Or just in the next generation. But this is always on a very primitive level of evolution. And the psychic being is not very conscious. It is in the state of formation. That's how animals are being reincarnated. When the animals leave their bodies, next will be just without any gap. Most probably that's why they are ready to die easier than human beings. Sri says on the entry into the body in this way, as regards the stage at which the soul returning for rebirth enters the new body, no rule can be laid down. For the circumstances vary with the individual. Some psychic beings get into relation with birth environment and the parents from the time of conception and determine the preparation of the personality and future in the embryo. So they are rearranging, so to say, the meeting of the parents or are present in that moment and already take care of their conception and the birth and entry into the embryo. Others join only at the time of delivery. Others even later in the life. And in these cases, it is some emanation of psychic being which upholds the life. Very interesting remark. When the psychic being joins later in life, it is only an emanation of some psychic being that holds the body, not the full psychic being inside. It should be noted that the conditions of the future birth are determined fundamentally, not during the stay in the psychic world, but at the time of death. The psychic being then chooses what it should work out in the next terrestrial appearance, and the conditions arrange themselves accordingly. I would like to preserve this for uh, later commentaries on the Vedic hymn of Yama and Yami because this is actually the indication of what is in that hymn. There are also more um, 
references. For example, Sri Krishna says in the Gita, um, Antakalicha mam eva smaran muktva kalevaram yav prayati samad bhavam yati nastyatra sanshayah yam yam vapi smaram bhavam tyajat yante kalevaram tam tam eva iti kaunteya sadatat bhava bhavitah. At the time of departure, who dwells upon me, who thinks upon me, thinks about me, leaving the body, he indeed goes to my bhava, to my state of consciousness. Bhava is that state of being or state of consciousness. There is no doubt about it. Whatever bhava or the state of consciousness one, one dwells upon while leaving the body, to that very state one goes, or son of Kunti, supported by it, supported by that very uh, state. This, uh, the last um, quotation from the mother, which I wanted to make before I go into the embryonic life. The mother on the entry into the body. The question. It is often said that children enter into possession of their psychic being when they are about seven. What does it, this mean exactly? Mother answers, this is not correct. There are people whose psychic being watches over their formation before their birth, even before they are in the womb of their mother. There are children whose psychic being comes into contact with them at the very moment they utter their first cry. There are also people whose psychic being comes a few hours after their birth, or some days after, or some weeks, or some months, some years after, or never. So uh, here, um, on this mysterious note that psychic being refuses to come into the body formation which it was meant to come into, I will stop with quotations and will go to my overview and hints which I got from Indian literature, from the Vedic literature, from um, other studies. So if you look at the triple worlds, of the Veda, we will see the levels of consciousness which um, the soul embodies with the body. Coming with the body together, these levels of consciousness uh, are manifested. And it's quite interesting because there are nine of them, and this is according to the mother. Um, there are nine levels uh, with an embodied state and three beyond, 12 different levels. So we have physical, physical, the basic physical material formation, vital physical, that very vitality in the uh, material frame, mental physical. And mother spoke about this quite a lot, uh, about the mind of cells. Um, and that is that mental formation within the physical body. Then there are triple vital. There is physical vital, there is vital vital, mental vital. These are all definitions by the mother, by the way. I'm applying them to the Veda because in the Veda we have three earths, three vital realms, three nirajansi, and tisro diyavah, and three heavens. And they correspond to nine levels. Then there is physical mind, vital mind, and mental mind. And altogether, these are called nine rays, Navagva rishis, rishis of nine rays. Um, once these nine rays are realized fully, they break through to the beyond, to Trirochanas, where there is 10th ray, yeah, which is coming with Indra. And Indra with his lightning breaking the top of our being and 
the rishis open up to the transcendental. So they are born with the tenth. Sri Aurobindo says, interestingly, that these nine rays are not only levels of consciousness, but can be considered as nine months. And it's so obvious that these nine months is something that, as the life of embryo, <laughs> because there are nine months of life of embryo, and there is a developmental paradigm which is taking place through the physical, physical to the mental, mental, mental mind. So if we look at our embryo development, we will see that we have three trimesters in the same way as the Vedic vision of three worlds, and first month, second month, and third month is the first trimester, and the development of embryo is here taking shape fully. The body is fully developed physically. It's quite amazing that small body, like one inch, or even a little bigger, is fully developed physically with the hands, with with the fingers, everything is there in the place already in the tiny, tiny shape within the first trimester. And then there is uh, the development of the vital faculties within second trimester and the mental uh, faculties within the last one before the body is born, the tenth, the tenth breaking through to the to another um, world or space. So if we compare them in this way, we will see very interesting uh, kind of matching paradigm. Navagvarishis uh, or the triple worlds and the trimesters and months of development. It's uh, amazing if we compare the development of the embryo of different species, we will see that at the first stage, at the very first stage, all of them are very closely re resembling one another. You could hardly say, if you look at the in the real, not in the picture, of course, in the picture, you will see some difference between different species, but still they are the closest on the physical level. On the vital, there is already very distinct difference made in the embryo and on the mental, finally, when the shape, the mental shape, the concept of the body is manifested, they are all very different before they are born. So this kind of shows us that we actually, as the human beings, cover the whole evolutionary stages, starting from the beginning of evolution, from the life of the plants, and then starting to embody into the uh, the uh, fish, uh, yeah, fish is first, and uh, from the fish we come to the animals, from the animals to human being. So, This is quite interesting because um, this evolutionary process is captured also by the 10 avatars of Vishnu. We start with fish, we come to the kurma or the tortoise, then varaha, uh, and then uh, narasimha, vamana, uh, parashurama, rama, krishna, um, Buddha, and finally, and finally we have Kalki Avatar, the tenth one. Um, it's quite amazing to think of it in this way, because you can see that the first three, uh, the first three are connected with the oceanic stage, with the stage which Stanislav Gross call, uh, Grof calls uh, oceanic or interstellar space, when the, the consciousness is embodied in the womb, in, the, in this, uh, the fullness of the waters within. And so um, I will come to Stanislav Grof, I didn't mention him yet, and his work uh, beyond the brain. 
which he examines the stages of four matrices of the embryo life. Um, he did it with LSD and people remembered their lives in the womb and they draw, draw different pictures. And these pictures were to the first matrix, they were always about the fish that the, the, the soul is traveling, the being is traveling on the big whale in the huge ocean. It's very pleasant state of being. So we can see that the first three avatars, Matsya, Kurma and Varaha, are water related. Matsya is totally a fish in the water. Kurma is leaving the water to the uh, earth already. It's a kind of second month where there is oh, finally there's something, the bone structure is being born. And then Varaha is the one who with his um, beaks, uh, uh, tusks, he takes out of the water the earth and brings earth into being. This is an amazing, but they are all water related. And the second um, is, um, according to Stanislav Grof, is a cosmic en engulfment or feeling of an entrapment, no exit. There's the space is, uh, the, we seek the way out from this entrapment. According to him, he was always looking for, um, for the problems in the embryo life and the solutions for that, uh, for the trauma. He looked for the trauma as psychotherapist and psychologist. But uh, we are not looking for the traumas, we are trying to understand the process of the development. So the second uh, trimester, Narasimha, Vamana and Parashurama, all of them are fighting for the space. It's quite interesting. Vamana makes uh, three steps and covers the whole space. Uh, Parashurama kills all the Kshatriyas, black Kshatriyas, and uh, releases earth from their um, robbery. Uh, so you could see that um, it kind of fits with the, the idea of these trimesters. And finally, intensification of pressure. The, I'm quoting here from Stanislav Grof, the borderline between pain and pleasure, volcanic type of ecstasy, brilliant colors, mm -hmm. intense feelings, etc., is the third trimester or the, um, the third matrix. And here we have Rama, Krishna and Buddha, intensification of fierce battles. All of them are engaged in different inner and outer battles, as we know. And finally, the release into a new light. Kalki avatar, freedom, bliss, light. Enormous decompression. Expansion of space. Illuminative type of ecstasy. Radiant light and beautiful colors. Feeling of rebirth. Um, there is more to it, of course, but I'm not sure that um, maybe we could, should open to the questions and answers. And here I wanted to show these nine levels, which are corresponding to our development. You can see that Annam, the material form, is developed through these chakras according to the mother. Muladhara chakra is the highest, which corresponds to mental physical. The vital physical corresponds to the knees chakra, which is below Muladhara, and below feet, there is the physical physical. This is all triple physical, uh, we mentioned, which is developing in um, from the top up. And then we have pranic levels. It is Svadhishthana Chakra, Manipura and Anahata on the level of torso. These were legs, now on the level of torso. We have physical vital, 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 mental vital. Finally, we come to the mental formation. Vishuddha Chakra, physical mind. Ajna Chakra, vital mind. And Sahasrara Chakra, mental mind. According to the mother, there are three more chakras above Sahasrara. They are all unnamed. 
They are known in the Veda as Svar world, intuition of a mind and supramental of a mind. These are the names given by Sri Aurobindo. So these could be considered our first three months of the birth, when the child is born. Intuition of a mind and the supramental of a mind. This is a projection to the future studies. So here I will stop my presentation and will open uh, the session to the questions and answers in case there are some questions. Do you want me to read them, Vladimir, or do you want to read them? I can also read, yes. Is DNA just programmed by parents or by child or by universe? A time of birth. Whoa. <laughs> I think by all three, <laughs> if you don't mind, if the conscious, the soul is very conscious, of course, it will start um, modifying the whole, the whole process of inherited DNA, because DNA is always inherited. So it belongs to the past, to the conditions which are given by the parents. But the modulation, as mother says, it is taking place by the conscious soul. It could actually lead the whole body in its development and already modulate the DNA there. And the universe, of course, is very important. And here the, uh, the ideas of Jyotisha could come in. And um, we have with us in our panel also uh, Ulrike Urvashi, she is not uh, showing her picture. She will be presenting the next uh, stage of the birth. Uh, she is a nurse and she has the whole philosophy behind. I do not know if she, if she is there, here or not. If yes, then, uh, then uh, we can and She has a question her. in the chat box too, uh, at some point, Vladimir. Yeah, I didn't see it. Wait a minute. You can read it if you want. One second. Chat. Okay, I can see it now. Um, you may want to read it. Please oh, type. Uh, yeah, the question. What is said about the maturity of a soul who connects with this physical world already at the point of conception is it considered more mature than the one which enters later well according to the mother yes uh, the the more the more conscious is the soul the more early it takes care of its own embodiment yeah so it will take care of the conditions of the parents, of their meeting, of the place, of the country, of the time of its conception and birth. So it will be very conscious to arrange everything as it wants. The less it is conscious, the, the less it is intrusive into this process and may enter into the womb uh, later or at the time of birth or even later. So there is kind of correspondence. Yes, you are correct. Uh, are there more? No. Yes, two more questions down there, Vladimir. I don't see them. What What is shared by Mother and Sri Aurobindo and through your understanding regarding how the soul and parents' soul choose each other? Right. Well, a uh, parent's soul, she mentions this, that um, the parents are very important because it's not only the soul of the parents, but the conditions in which the, the psychic being will be living, the parents and what qualities parents, uh, what, uh, what level of consciousness they have and how they can help the consciousness of the psychic being to evolve and grow. It's very important who parents are definitely their soul development is important and also their um, what they inherited or their dna is important in that sense because 
the more developed soul is um, um, framing the body and the instruments of the body to be suiting for its own um, uh, purpose and functioning. So it will be uh, enlightening them and uh, and at the same time learning from them how to evolve within the given framework. So yes, and it must be so. Um, how they choose one another and the most conscious souls, by the way, Stanislav Grof also has these um, uh, memories of the people who remembered how their parents met before they even knew each other, how they met for the first time before long before conception of the soul so the soul was watching and selecting proper parents in some cases most probably even causing the birth and their marriage <laughs> some people marry only for the sake of the child to be born and it is quite true especially when the souls are um, conscious and select their parents and conditions of their birth and this is quite amazing to think of you know um, what happens when this psychic being refuses to come in? Yes, it's a big question. We do not, I do not know what to tell you, but if the psychic being was supposed to come in and the conception took place and the child was born, as mother says, sometimes psychic being never comes then this formation of the body can be taken by some vital entities and um, and these vital entities have no soul yes? uh, and these are very could be very dangerous beings could be nothing but could be very dangerous mother has a, one example of this kind uh, stalin stalin had no soul it was a vital formation being a human being without psychic being even hitler she says had soul very small tiny soul spark but um, stalin did not have so it was a vital formation so you could see what can happen yeah. it's a good example actually slide one says there is continuous upward evolution and in later slide it mentions that the next birth is according to the last intention and the time of death. If one thinks about lower species at that time, then uh, is that time then, is that possible to go in downward direction? I don't think so. They speak specifically about this, the downward direction is impossible. Though in the um, Buddhistic literature you find this possibility, especially in Jatakas, where the soul can be reincarnated in the animals and go down and down. It's a choice to go, as it were. Most probably the choice is there, but it is uh, hardly possible because the evolution is moving forward you cannot become worse you can face more challenges but you can't become worse than you were already formed uh, can you explain if mother said anything about ivf what is ivf which is becoming more common now due to it's it's a, a fertilization oh this is a, the artificial kind of mm -hmm. uh, yeah um where is psychic being choice there um i don't think that um a sexual act is the way to really generate the call for the psychic being i don't think so truly speaking nowhere i read it from the mother and Sri Aurobindo the importance of the conception. So most probably it is possible. I don't think why it should not be possible. If that is decided from above, if psychic being is, um, how to say, uh, escorting this uh, conception and looking at it, watching at it happening, so why not? 
uh, truly speaking in the future, the sexual act would not be necessary for the conception of a, a psychic being or the bringing psychic being into the body. Mother says in the future it will happen with the power of the thought itself. So most probably this, this could be a transition. In my current lived experience, my mother gave birth to me on her birthday. Oh, that's interesting. It's a very interesting thing. All my life, IVIA, IVE, always felt I was her mother, even more so in her end of life. Hmm. It was challenging to experience her as my mother, just biological. Just sharing experience. My thoughts, any thoughts on this? As mother says, everything is possible. But everything is possible. Yeah? So there is no restriction for any possibility of embodiment relations in that sense. And most probably your feelings are very mysterious and I cannot answer to them what what was your case i think you have to examine it it seems stan groff's work is still being looked at in clinical settings yes by the way at the beginning of the 80s in the or at the end of the 80s um there were these studies there is another study which is called Life, of Life After Life by Moody. Some of you may know this study. And what happens after we leave the body, clinical cases of clinical death, where people see what, where they go and how they return back to the body. Uh, and uh, this Stanislav Grof's um, uh, research uh, of the uh, memories of the embryo life and the birth uh, with uh, thousands of cases, making matrices, uh, analyzing the pictures, um, opened up uh, science to the life which was before the body uh, was born and after the body is left. And I think this would continue, will continue, and we will discover more and more in scientific language, things which are known to the Vedic rishis and were known to Sri Aurobindo and the mother, and their description is very precise because it is built on their own experiences. What texts does mother share this regarding no physical sex? For conception in the future yes this is uh, in the agenda you will find it mother explains this uh, of the future of the body the body would not have sexual differences the sexual organs will disappear they they also the organs of um, digestion will disappear so there will be sexless bee very beautiful but the the breathing will be there still uh, and the same formation of the body will be there. Uh, it is in the agenda. You may try to find. Does premature birth affect the development of the mental consciousness? I cannot answer because premature birth will continue to develop in the, in the clinical conditions they deal with the baby. And I think... Um, uh, Urvashi would answer better for this. Uh, in the next session, she will speak on this, especially on uh, how children are born and what help we can give to them as, uh, as a nurse also. Do you feel these visits into the uh, ancestral past can help with spiritual awakening? Hmm. It's not really about the past so much. It's about the archetypal formation which we all undergo. We all go through the same form 
and constantly um, repeating the same cycle. Um, the past really is not the past, yes? It is present and it is determining our future. It gives us all the materials and all the intentions of moving forward. In that sense, yes. When you mentioned regarding reincarnation after a thousand years, is that according to our years? Yes, it is according to our years. Will that be the same number of years for the soul? No, it will be different number of the, for the soul. I think I read somewhere that one, uh, that our one year is one day for the soul. Something of the kind could be as yes, considered. We do not know. We can't count uh, because the soul is coming from the fifth dimension, as it were, which was mentioned by Alok in the previous session. So we the time place totally different there so one day there could be thousand years here it doesn't matter because the soul is in its own place of bliss um, if there is no sexual organs in the future will there be separate genders or will there be only one gender there will be only it the child of the mother So I think I answered all the questions quickly and reasonably. <laughs> there is one from Urvasi in the chat. And uh, Urvasi, if you want to just unmute yourself, you can actually ask uh, the question. But um, you can also otherwise... yes, show your, your uh, this video. Yeah, your face. That would be lovely. I'm going to just send her a thing to ask her to unmute. But if not, I can read uh, her. I'm not sure I understand it. That's also why I was hoping that she would read it. Um, okay, I guess not. So I'll go ahead and read it. Um, I will read it. I will read it. Epigenetics okay, bring another view on the extent of the influence of, of the DNA and allows to consider, for example, the first imprint in life as majorly important what is said about that? It's a very good thing, um, what you said, uh, epigenetics. It's an amazing thing that epigenetics is something of our feelings, emotions, uh, experiences, which are modifying, invisibly modifying the behavior of DNA. It is not modifying it uh, in a gross manner, but softly modifying its behavior and with this it will modify the dna in uh, in the longer run so the modification is taking place through our experiences through what we know through how we see things and it the dna is taking it into um into consideration as it were it bends towards it. It opens uh, different uh, genes in different timings, in different constellations now, considering that particular influence. Uh, and this is how actually the evolution of species of the body is taking place. The survival of the fittest is taking place through these experiences and modification of the body is taking place. This is a very good point. Thank you, Morbashi. Yeah, that's basically it for today. And we are on time. It's very nice, one hour. Uh, so thank you for listening. And um, so we will move forward and see what happens next. And I'll also just mention, uh, we'll be putting uh, Vladimir's, not only his recorded session, but we'll be putting his PowerPoint also out there on Knowledge uh, Bank, in case you and want I to access to I will add also them. the text uh, from the mother, all that much extended text on the psychic being and its embodiment for your Perfect. study. Great. Good. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.